In the previous video, we learned about Gaussian elimination and how this can be used to solve a system of equations by row-reducing the augmented matrix to an echelon form. And then you solve the corresponding system of equation from the echelon form uh, using the technique of back substitution. Now, a variant of Gaussian elimination is what's known as Gauss-Jordan elimination, for which the idea behind Gauss-Jordan elimination is that row reduction is an effective tool to form an echelon form, but if we want an echelon form, the row reduced echelon form is the most desirable echelon form. It'll be unique. Um, and once it's once you have it, the problem is basically over with. And so can we not just get any echelon form, but how do we get the row reduced echelon form? So gauss jordan elimination comes in, in what we call two phases. Uh, we call the first one the forward phase and the second one the backwards phase. The forward phase is essentially just Gaussian elimination. You row reduce the matrix until it's an echelon form, always focusing on getting zeros below the pivots and you work left to right. The backwards phase works very similarly, but in the backwards phase, we will rescale our pivots so that they're one. We don't do that in the forward phase. We rescale the pivots so that they're one, and then we start making zeros form above the pivot positions, but this time we work right to left, hence why we call it forward and backwards. In English, we read left to right, and so therefore that's the forward phase, and right to left is the backwards phase from, this, uh, from the English language perspective. And so let's see an example of how one might do that. Consider the following augmented matrix A. Uh, it has a four by four coefficient matrix. Uh, illustrated here on the screen. If we look for the leftmost column, that'll be the first column it typically is, we have a zero in this position. And so one of the best ways to get a non-zero entry in the pivot position would just be to interchange. That's typically why we use the interchange operation to get a non-zero entry uh, in the pivot position. I'm gonna pick the I'm gonna pick the second row for the following reasons. I mean the third row, the fourth row has a zero in it, so that wouldn't help us. And honestly, when it comes to multiplying, I'd rather have a one than a three. So I think the one's a little bit more preferable here. So the first row of the new matrix was the second row of the first matrix. And then the first row of the first matrix is the second row of the second matrix. So those two are gonna swap, swap roles right there. Now looking at our pivot position again here, we wanna zero out everything below, which that only remains, there's only something non-zero in the third row right there. So to get rid of the three in the third row, we're gonna replace row three with row three minus three times row one. You'll notice one times negative three is a negative three. Those will cancel out. We'll get a negative three again. We're gonna get a negative six, two times negative three. Four times negative three is a negative 12. And then three times negative three is a negative nine. Combine those things together. Notice that the three minus three will cancel, giving us a zero, that's to be expected. Seven minus three is gonna give us a four. Uh, negative six and negative six actually gives you a negative 12, not a zero, D double check that one. And then eight minus 12 gives us a negative four and one minus nine is a negative eight. So we replace the rows there. And so that then takes care of our first column. Everything below it's now a zero. Uh, so ignoring the first, the, 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 pivot, the first pivot row and the first pivot column, we then look for the next pivot, which the leftmost column will be now the second column. This puts us a pivot position in the 2-2 two, two position. Uh, it's non-zero, so that's great. So let's start zeroing things out below it. To get rid of the four that's below the one, I'm gonna take row three and subtract from it four times row two. And to get rid of the negative one right here, I just need to add to row four, row two. And so notice, you're gonna see, I'm actually gonna do two elementary row operations at the same time. If you have to add two rows together, that is acceptable. Um, I, I, you don't wanna to do too much all at once, but doing these simultaneous uh, row replacements is not gonna be, it, as long as you write it down, I don't think it's gonna be doing, doing demanding too much of you. So feel free to do that. Again, if you write the superscripts, I think that really helps you avoid some common arithmetic mistakes here. So if you take, row two and times it by negative four, we get minus four, we get positive 12, we get positive four, and then we're going to get a uh, positive eight, like so. Uh, if we do row row two time, we'll, we just add it, right? So plus one, minus three, minus one, and then minus two. So when we combine some things together, let's do row three first. That cancels, that cancels, that cancels, and that cancels. You'll now notice we have a row of zeros. 
uh, which is perfectly acceptable. Notice this is not a contradiction. We don't have zeros on the left equaling something non-zero on the right. So this is not evidence that the system is inconsistent because if it was inconsistent, we could stop because uh, we know there's no solution. Uh, this is actually an identity. This identity basically tells us nothing. It doesn't tell us anything. Uh, the system could still be inconsistent for all we know. Uh, it's this, this isn't gonna be helpful for We're just gonna throw zeros at the bottom. That's why we throw rows of zeros at the bottom because they're not extremely useful uh, in helping us determine the system of equations here. Um, as for the fourth row, right, the ones will cancel out. The threes also cancel out, but no cancellation out here. Four minus one is a three, and then negative four and negative two is a negative six, like so. So then we have a one, one there. We have to look for the next pivot position, right? Uh, if we ignore the columns and rows that have pivots in them, uh, this right here is the sub matrix we now have to consider. The first column right here is a column of zero, so we're gonna to go to the next column over. And so our next pivot position is going to be in the three, four position. But we need something non-zero here, so interchange uh, rows three and four. And now we're gonna see that our matrix looks like the following. Uh, so notice that by requiring we have something non-zero in our pivot positions, that I automatically put that row of zeros at the bottom. That's gonna that's to be expected when you work on these type of exercises. At this moment, the matrix is now in echelon form. If you wanted to solve the system of equations by Gaussian elimination, this is the moment which you would break, and then you would start looking at the system of equations. X1 plus 2x2 plus 2x3 plus 4x4 is equal to 3. X2 minus 3x3 minus x4 equals negative two, and then you're gonna get that three x4 equals negative six. You get zero over zero, which really means you don't even need it. It doesn't add anything to your system there. It doesn't take anything away. And so then you could solve that system by back substitution. That would be perfectly fine. That's how you solve it using Gaussian elimination. We wanna do Gauss-Jordan elimination, which means we've now finished the forward phase. This is the forward phase of the algorithm. To go to the backwards phase, we've now identified all of our pivot positions. And I should mention that since our matrix is in echelon form, I'm gonna go back a second. Since our matrix here is in echelon form, we know that the system's consistent because there's no contradictions. Those would have emerged by now. We also know that this system will have multiple solutions because we have a non-pivot column in number three. X3 is gonna be a free variable. Uh, for this system, x, 1, 2, and 4 are going to be dependent variables. We'll see some more about that in just a second. So we know a lot about the solution set. There's going to be multiple solutions with one free variable, um, but it is consistent. Now, to start moving into the backwards phase, we want to get ones in this pivot position. So starting on the right and moving left, you see there's a pivot position, uh, the, the particularly the Four, the, the 3, 4 position. There's a 3 there. We don't want a 3 there, so we're going to divide that row by 3. Uh, we're going to divide the third row by three. Now, that might mean introducing fractions at this point, but fortunately, a negative six there is divisible by three, so we're good to go. And so going back to the slide, we see the pivot position in the third row is now a one, and then that negative six became a negative two when we divided by three. Next, we want to, working right to left, so working on the, the rightmost pivot, we now want to get rid of all the entries above the pivot that are not already zero. And the way we do that is similar to how we got zeros before. To get rid of the four right here, we need to take row one and minus it, subtract from it four times row three. Notice to do that, you're gonna get minus four and you're going to get a plus eight. And that's what's gonna be happening right there. Uh, you'll notice I didn't write any numbers over here, but that's because when you look at this, if you take negative four times zero and you add it to any number, it's just gonna be a zero, nothing's gonna be changing. This is why we actually do the forward phase and the backwards phase separately, because when we do the backwards phase, there's a ton of zeros inside of the matrix, and so therefore a lot of the positions which you might have to have done arithmetic on are actually gonna be ignored. This makes it a lot more efficient. To get rid of the negative one right here, we just need to take row two and add to it row three. So we add one and we minus two. And so upon doing that, the negative four and the one, negative one, are, sorry, the positive four and the negative one are gonna disappear. 
giving us zeros right here. Three and eight is 11 and negative two, negative two is negative four. So now our matrix, when you look at that pivot in the fourth column, the, that column now looks like what it's supposed to. There's the pivot is one and every other number in that column is zero. Focus then on the next pivot over, climbing up the ladder this time. Uh, we have to get rid of the one in this position. So to do that, we're gonna take row one and we're going to subtract from it row two. So we get a minus one right here. You, you do have to make sure you do this column right here. So you're gonna get a positive three. This column's a zero, so you can ignore it. This column's a zero, so you can ignore it. And then you're gonna add four right there. So combining these things together, in the second column, you're gonna get a zero right here. Uh, you're gonna get a five right here. And then in the last column, you get a 15. And so that then takes care of this the, the second column, right? The pivot is a one, everything else is a zero. Then when you look at the first column, it already has a pivot of one. We can scale if we have to, to make sure there's a one there. Everything below is a zero and there's nothing above, so it's already there. So this matrix now is in row reduced echelon form. This is the RREF. And so when we look at the solution, we can see the following. Think of the system of equations now. The system of equations. You're going to get that x1 plus 5x3 equals 15. We're going to get that x2 minus 3x3 equals negative 4. And we get that x4 equals negative 2. So solve the dependent variables for with respect to the free variables. The dependent variables will be those that correspond to pivots. So we're going to see that x1 equals 13 minus 5x3. We're going to see that x2 equals negative 4 plus 3x3. And then x4 is always negative 2, irrelevant of any other value. And so this is going to be our general solution. Um, if we say like, oh, like, let x3 be arbitrarily chosen v2, then the solution set would look like the following. You get 13 minus 5t, you're going to get negative 4 plus 3t, you're going to get t, and you're going to get negative 2. This is the general solution we find from the RREF. And this is the same solution we would have gotten had we solved using Gaussian elimination. Gauss-Jordan elimination has, this, has the benefit that when you have the RREF, the problem is essentially done, so there's no more work to be done. So the difference between Gauss-Jordan and just Gaussian elimination is the second half of the problem, the backwards phase, do we want to do that in the matrix or do we want to do that with the system of equations? And for the most part, I think we're going to get much more comfortable with the row operations with respect to a matrix. And therefore, we're going to, for the most part, going to want to be row reducing this matrix to echelon form using Gaussian elimination. I do want to mention that the Gaussian elimination algorithm we just saw essentially shows that every matrix can be row reduced to an, a row, to an RREF, and that RREF has to be equivalent. Uh, and so because every matrix has a unique RREF, we can see that two matrices are row equivalent if and only if they have the same RREF. And if two, row, two matrices are row equivalent, then in fact, the corresponding systems of equations are equivalent as well. So the RREF determines uniquely what the solution set of the corresponding system of equations is, and which is why it's so important, which is why we spent this lecture discussing how we can strategically use the elementary row operations to help us compute echelon forms, especially the row reduced echelon form. That then ends for us chapter six, which introduces us to the basic ingredients of linear algebra. In the next chapter, chapter two, we're gonna focus on vectors, the algebra and geometry of vectors, and use some of the techniques we've learned about vectors there, but also add on to it some more. Uh, take a look for that uh, with the link that's on the screen now, and I hope to see you next time, everyone. Bye.